the birth of agriculture around the late Mesolithic marked a transformative shift for human societies. As the climate stabilized after the last ice age, humans began to domesticate plants and animals, leading to the establishment of sedentary communities. This agricultural revolution allowed humans to form more complex social structures and permanently alter ecosystems. However, despite these advancements, the Holocene mass extinction continued, driven by overhunting, habitat destruction, and the pressures of early human expansion. The combination of climate change and human impact led to the ongoing loss of many species, especially large mammals, which struggled to adapt to the changing environment. The North American short-faced bear was one of the largest terrestrial mammalian carnivores of the Pleistocene. It stood up to 1.6 meters tall at the shoulder and could reach over 3.5 meters tall when standing upright. Its long limbs and narrow build suggest it was adapted for covering large distances, possibly as a highly mobile scavenger or omnivore rather than a specialized predator. Contrary to earlier beliefs that it was a hypercarnivore, stable isotope studies have shown regional dietary variation some individuals were top-level carnivores, while others likely consumed significant plant matter. It had a short, broad snout and large nasal passages, possibly enhancing its sense of smell over long distances. It went extinct approximately 11,000 years ago. Its disappearance coincides with major climate shifts at the end of the last ice age and the arrival of Paleo-Indian hunters in North America. Competition with other large carnivores like dire wolves and saber-toothed cats, as well as the decline of megafaunal prey, may have contributed to its extinction. While no direct evidence of human hunting of Arctotus has been found, ecosystem changes caused by human expansion likely played a role in its demise. Mexican horse was a stout, short-legged equid that lived in North America, particularly in what is now Mexico. It resembled modern horses in overall shape, but had a more robust build and may have been adapted to a grazing lifestyle in open habitats. Its status as a distinct species is debated, with some researchers suggesting it may be a regional variant of Equus ferus or part of a species complex. Damaliscus hypsodon was a small alcelophene, only around the size of an impala. Its teeth showed a degree of hypsodonty greater than living antelopes and comparable to horses, indicating that it was a specialized grazer. Its remains have been found in association with oryx and zebras, which along with its tooth morphology, suggest that it lived in open and arid grasslands. The flat-headed peccary was a Pleistocene pig-like herbivore native to North America. It resembled modern peccaries but was slightly larger, reaching up to one meter in length, with long legs and a deep chest adapted for running in open environments. It had high crowned teeth suited for chewing tough vegetation, likely including grasses and roots. Fossil evidence suggests it lived in herds and may have used caves for shelter, as many remains are found in cave deposits across North America. Stable isotope analyses indicate a diet consistent with mixed feeding, though some populations were more grass-dominated. The species went extinct around 10,000 years ago. Its extinction is likely linked to rapid climate changes that altered its habitat, as well as possible overhunting by humans newly arrived in North America. Despite being once widespread, they vanished alongside many other large mammals in the Quaternary Extinction Event. Schneider's duck was a prehistoric species of dabbling duck that lived in North America. It was closely related to modern teals and is believed to have had a similar body size and general appearance. Fossils have been found primarily in United States and it probably inhabited freshwater wetlands. The reasons for its extinction are unclear, but may include climate shifts and ecological changes that affected waterfowl habitats. Large-billed blackbird was a species of blackbird known from California and northern South America. 
It was closely related to modern members of the genus Euphagus, but had a notably larger and more robust bill, possibly indicating differences in feeding behavior or ecological niche. The species likely lived in open woodland and wetland environments, feeding on seeds and insects. It also went extinct, possibly due to climate-driven habitat changes and ecosystem disruptions. Argentinian short-faced bear was a species of extinct bear that lived in South America, primarily in regions that are now Bolivia and Argentina. It belonged to the genus Arctotherium, which evolved after the Great American Biotic Interchange when North American animals migrated south. This species was smaller and more gracile compared to its gigantic relative Arctotherium angustitans and likely weighed around 300 kilograms, roughly the size of a large modern bear. Its skeletal structure suggests it was omnivorous but leaned more toward herbivory, occupying a niche similar to that of modern spectacled bears. Fossil remains have been found in high-altitude Andean environments, indicating it was adapted to mountainous terrain and cooler climates. Isotope studies from its bones suggest a mixed diet, possibly including fruits, small animals, and carrion, making it a flexible forager. Like other Pleistocene megafauna, it disappeared around 10,000 years ago, likely due to a combination of rapid climate changes and increasing human presence in South America. Hunting pressure from early Paleo-Indians may have played a role, especially as human expansion coincided with its decline. Its extinction reflects the broader pattern of large mammal losses during the late Pleistocene across the Americas. The stag moose was a large elk-like herbivore that weighed over 700 kilograms with long legs and elaborate palmate antlers. It inhabited spruce-dominated wet woodland ecosystems and likely evolved from Cervalsus latifrons, which migrated from Eurasia during the Middle Pleistocene. Fossils have been found across the Midwest and Northeast United States, some dated as far back as 30,000 years ago. This species went extinct around 10,000 years ago. Several theories have been proposed for its extinction, including competition from the newly arrived true moose, habitat loss due to climate change and deglaciation, and possible overhunting by early humans. While direct evidence of human predation is limited, remains found alongside Paleo-Indian artifacts in places like Sheridan Cave suggest potential interactions. Its specialized woodland habitat may have made it particularly vulnerable to rapid environmental changes. The stag moose's relatively high reproductive rate compared to other megafauna was not enough to prevent its decline in the face of ecological upheaval. The woodland muskox was a large, extinct bovine related to the modern muskox, but more adapted to temperate and arid environments across North America. It had a robust build with a distinctive domed skull and forward-sweeping horns, likely used in intraspecific combat or display. It stood about 1.2 meters tall at the shoulder and weighed approximately 300 kilograms, with longer legs and a less woolly coat than its Arctic relatives, allowing it to roam farther south. It disappeared around 10,000 years ago, likely due to a combination of climate-driven habitat changes at the end of the Ice Age and increased human hunting pressure. The Shasta ground sloth was a large herbivorous mammal that lived in the semi-arid regions of western North America. It measured around 3 meters in length and weighed up to 250 kilograms, with long limbs and powerful claws adapted for browsing vegetation. Unlike modern tree sloths, Nothrotheriops was terrestrial and slow-moving, feeding on a diet of desert plants such as agave, mesquite, and yucca, as revealed by remarkably preserved dung deposits found in caves. These dung samples have provided rich insights into its ecology and diet, making it one of the best-studied extinct sloths. It likely lived solitarily or in small groups and inhabited dry caves, which contributed to the exceptional preservation of its remains. Its extinction occurred roughly 10,000 years ago, coinciding with the quaternary extinction event that wiped out much of the North American megafauna. The causes of extinction likely included climate change following the last ice age, resulting in habitat shifts and loss of food resources. 
There is also evidence suggesting early human presence in the same regions, so overhunting may have played a contributing role. The giant Cape Zebra was a large equid that lived in southern Africa during the Pleistocene epoch. It was significantly larger than modern zebras, with robust limb bones suggesting it was adapted for open, grassy environments. Some paleontologists believe it may not be a distinct species, but rather a large morph of the plains zebra based on similarities in skull and dental features. Fossil remains have been found across South Africa, particularly in cave and river deposits, providing valuable insights into its size and habitat preferences. The species likely went extinct around the end of the Pleistocene, possibly due to climate change and habitat alterations, though human impact cannot be ruled out entirely. The giant pika was a small lagomorph that lived during the early Holocene on in the American Arctic. It was adapted to cold environments and had a compact body to conserve heat. This species is notable for being one of the few pika species to survive in isolated Arctic regions. It likely went extinct due to climate warming and habitat changes after the last ice age. The giant beaver was one of the largest rodents to ever live, measuring up to 2.5 meters long and weighing around 90 kilograms. Unlike modern beavers, it had large, robust incisors, but lacked the flat tail used for swimming and dam building. It inhabited wetland environments across North America during the Pleistocene epoch, roughly 1.5 million to 10,000 years ago. This species was primarily herbivorous, feeding on aquatic plants and possibly wood, although its exact diet is still debated. Fossil evidence suggests it lived in swampy areas and constructed lodges similar to modern beavers, but on a larger scale. Its extinction also coincided with dramatic climate changes at the end of the last ice age. Additionally, human hunting pressure and habitat loss due to changing ecosystems likely contributed to its decline. The disappearance of Castoroides marked the loss of a unique species that played a significant ecological role in shaping wetland environments. Vero tapir was a species of tapir that lived in North America. It was similar in size and appearance to modern tapirs, with a stout body, short legs, and a flexible snout used for browsing vegetation. This species inhabited forested and wetland environments, feeding mainly on leaves, fruits, and other plant material. It went extinct around 10,000 years ago, likely due to a combination of climate change and habitat loss at the end of the Ice Age. Human hunting may have also played a role in its extinction, as suggested by some archaeological evidence. Harrington's mountain goat was smaller than today's mountain goats and had a longer, narrower face accompanied by thinner, smaller horns. Dung finds suggest that the goats frequented caves in the Grand Canyon during spring. Their diet seems to have consisted of both grasses and browsing of conifers and water birch. The extinction of these goats is known to have coincided with the disappearance of at least 25 genera of land mammals and the arrival of Native American hunters of the Clovis culture in the region. The smaller South American horse was a prehistoric horse that lived during the late Pleistocene, known for its robust body and short, thick neck. It was well adapted to grazing on tough grasses in open, dry environments like grasslands and steppes. Compared to modern horses, Hippidian had a more primitive skull shape and sturdier limbs, reflecting its specialized lifestyle. Fossils have been found primarily in Argentina and Chile, indicating a wide geographic range. The species went extinct approximately 10,000 years ago, likely due to climate changes at the end of the Ice Age, and increased hunting pressure from humans. This extinction fits into the broader pattern of megafaunal declines across South America during this period. South American palmate antler deer was a species of deer that lived in South America during the late Pleistocene. It had relatively high, thick antlers compared to other deer species, which gave it a distinctive appearance. 
dental microware analysis suggests it had a mixed feeder diet, including grass and perhaps with the occasional ingestion of gritstone. It went extinct during the Pleistocene-Holocene transition, possibly as a result of climate change and nutritional stress. Macronycteris is an extinct bat from Madagascar. It is known from numerous jaws and teeth, which were collected in a cave at Anjohebe in 1996 and described as a new species in 2007. The site where it was found is at most 10,000 years old. It was the largest insectivorous bat of Madagascar and had broader molars and a more robust lower jaw compared to other species. Glossotherium was a large ground sloth that lived in South America. It measured up to 3 meters in length and weighed around 1,000 kilograms. This herbivore had powerful limbs with large claws used for digging and pulling down branches to feed on tough vegetation. Glossotherium had a robust skull and strong jaw muscles, allowing it to chew fibrous plants efficiently. It inhabited a variety of environments, including grasslands and forests. Fossil evidence suggests it was a slow-moving animal that relied on its size for protection against predators. It became extinct, likely due to climate changes and human hunting pressures, as usual. Its extinction is part of the larger quaternary megafaunal extinction event that affected many large mammals, 